Hello everyone, welcome back to the Lady in the Color Clocks read along. Today we're going to start off with chapter 12. I'm just curious, what are you guys' thoughts so far? So feel free to leave a comment below or share any wonderings or whatever it is you would like to talk about. So today we're going to start off at chapter 12, The Letters. I've got it! We could have them write letters to themselves from the future, and then they could read it. What if they don't believe it? After all, it is their past self. We will just have to try. We don't have many options. And so the travel and time began. April of 1965. Jamie, what place is this? Wow! I remembered it instantly. It was Springfield. Springfield looks the same as it does now. Springfield. Amelia, we are in America. Oh, no wonder this place looks dodgy. Hey, not all of America looks like this. Give it a chance, I said, sarcastically. Amelia laughs. Jamie, I'm just kidding. Okay, we need to find my dad. Well, not quite dad yet. It wouldn't be hard to. Springfield was a very small population for a small town. It didn't take long until we heard voices. James, who do you think you are? Amelia, it's him. How did I know it was him? Sure, I recognize the old looking house that strangely looked like the one we used to live in. Perhaps it was. I mean, we are multiplied dec decades in the past. We watched my dad to be as a young adult in the moment where he became someone that he wasn't. James, I am tired of you not acting like a man. You are making a bad name for our family and yourself. You need to grow up or leave. We watched as he took it in. Not wanting to disappoint his father, he was walking away after a loud, Fine! Jamie, where is he going now? Quick, follow me. I had somehow known he was going to the lake where we used to have our family picnics. He stood by the lake and skipped stones as he thought. After some time, he took out an old, brown, worn-out leather journal from his backpack. He threw the journal as far as he could into the lake. Oh no, Amelia, we have to get it. We waited for him to leave and then took the home, homemade raft to get it. As we rode towards the journal, we heard the sound of laughing. Hey, do you hear that? What's going on? We both became curious and decided to paddle further. Oh, where is my knight in shining armor, my noble steed? There was a girl about 10 years of age. She was dressed in a pink and white poofy dress. She had a tiara and a clear gl glittery high heels on. She was the most beautiful princess I had seen. She looked so familiar to me. We then realized why. She looked up. It was my mom. Lacey, it's time for supper. She then began to take off her princess outfit in a rushed pace. She had regular clothes on underneath. She was hiding being a princess. This was shortly before her dad left for good. Jamie, we have to go. We can't interact with them or it will change time. Amelia must have known how tempted I was to change her timeline. I was sad in that moment. I wanted my 15 year old self to run up to my future mom and tell her that it was okay to dream, that the things people say so much, pay so much attention to won't matter and as the years go on that she could fully be herself. I knew I had to contain myself for now. Okay, how are we going to get them to write letters? How will they know? As I asked the questions, I realized there was a way I could communicate with them. We will write them. I know them well enough to make it sound like them. Okay, awesome plan, Jamie, but now we need to go back home so that we don't get too caught up in the future. I realized it had already been a full 24 hours since we were home in the present. Home. England was now our home. I began to think more about it. We had been so caught up in time that it didn't feel like I had already lived there for eight months. On the note of time, it was strange being in two places at once and almost three decades earlier at that. It was a different era for sure. I continued to think about what once was and now no longer was. 
This place, Springfield, was no longer the norm for me. Per perhaps home isn't just a place. I began to get more lost into more thoughts, and then Amelia tugged at me. We have to go. Okay. I took one last glimpse at the grassy landscape that was surrounded by water, small houses and small stores. It is kind of like closure for me in a sense. And just like that, we were back in the hallway as if it had we had never left to begin with. We best get back to class, Amelia said with a grin. The day went by fast. I got home and started to think what I would write as my brother's and parents' future self. I didn't know how they would respond to it, but it was a choice that I was willing to chance. It was quiet in the house, so it was perfect timing to write. So I began with my dad. Dear James, you are probably you in the future reading this. Just know wherever you are in life at this point, that growing up isn't what people always think. We were designed to do different things. It only goes downhill if we decide we should all follow the same path, because it is the norm. How would new things come about if we just did the norm? We were made to step out. We weren't made to be boxed in. Stepping out is going to feel uncomfortable at first, but then it will be a new creative way. You will have opened up the opportunity for others to be who they have wanted to be. So grow up, but grow up into who you want to be. Create an event beyond your heart's desire. By the way, you won't remember yourself writing this, but trust that it is your heart speaking for you. Sincerely, James, your future self. After writing the first letter, I thought of my mom. Dear Lacey, this is a letter from your future self. You have been told that imagining and dreaming were for kids, that it was childish. You were made to think it wasn't responsible or what young ladies should do. Even though you were so young, those around you expected you to be like them. It is a lie that you can't dream and be responsible. You were taught to only think and take care of others, leaving yourself behind. You were meant to shine and be your fullest to you. Hopefully you, need, you read this before it is too late. Be you, no matter if people laugh at you or say that it is silly. Things change and so do opinions. Live life for you in the way that you would want others to live. Much love, Lacey, your future self. Tears began to fall onto the papers as I realized it wasn't just the few that I knew that had lived so conformed to others' beliefs and systems. If only they could see who they could be, if only they stepped away from all the voices telling them otherwise. Jack was last on the list. Jack, this is a letter from your heroic self, your future self. Did you know that there is more to superheroes than Spider-Man and Batman? That superheroes in the world that are disguised as regular humans? In their world, completing a task is a mission completed. Whether it is taking a shot in a basketball game or encouraging someone, it all counts the same. When you were younger, you dreamed to be a superhero. And you still can be if you wish. Don't give up on your dream because others think that it is silly. Even the biggest superheroes known to man had opposition. You were created for the grander things. So go and save the world and the biggest tasks and the little tasks that you do. Sincerely, Jack. Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow was an inside joke that we had when we were younger. My dad was the one that came up with the nickname. Besides, the fact that they had the same name, Dad chose Jack Sparrow as his nickname because Jack was adventurous just like him. Now that I think about it, Dad must have traveled for fun. Time traveled for fun. It is 1996 and Jack Sparrow wasn't even around until around 2003. As I was finishing up the letters, there was a knock at the door. Jamie, there's someone here to see you. His name is Charles. Charlie? I then remembered it was Lenora's friend. Charlie, it's so good to see you. Also, we need to talk. I already know, young one. My mom was listening to us. She stepped in with a concerned look on her face. That mom protective look. Jamie, what happened? How do you guys know each other? Who is this guy? Jamie, 
And just like that, mom mode was on. Oh, he, he is a friend of Lenora's. We, we, we met, he was just telling me, Jamie, cut to it. I can tell that you're in story mode. I couldn't think of what to say fast enough. I could tell, I could tell what I didn't want to say was about to come out. And then I remembered the letter to her. It was a perfect invitation. One sec, mom, and I will explain it all. I quickly grabbed the letter and gave it to her. I didn't know how it would go, but I was choiceless at this point. I watched as she read it. Tears began to stream down her face. So many emotions crossed her face in just a few seconds. Confused, sad, hopeful, and sad again. Jamie, how, where, and when? She then ran to her room, not being able to contain the emotions from what she just read. I don't think I've ever seen her like that. We never expressed much negative emotion in our family. Meaning, when someone was upset, they would just cover it up with sar sarcasm or joy. We didn't make much of a deal out of it. We were all told that strength looked like not being weak. And somehow, we equated crying as a sign of weakness. Yet, we don't do that with any other emotions. To me, weakness is showing strength. You're strong enough to not hide the truth of what is happening within you. And yet again, as I say these things in my mind, it is another reminder of how different I am from most. I value realness or authenticity, as most would say. I've never liked anything fake and could easily point it out. You may be thinking at this point, she is so intelligent for her age, but you're just being invited into another aspect of my mind where most things have to stay because while I don't keep myself in a box, I can only come presented a certain way to others. I stood there frozen thinking of mom, thinking of the things I just thought through. I realized I am constantly narrating a story in my mind. Jamie, Jamie, what just happened? Chapter 13, Out of Sight. I turned back to Charlie. Charlie, time is running out. We, we need, no need to explain, child. I have seen it all and have been here. You, you have? Yes, and I agree. We need them to know now. We then traveled to a time where my father was. Deep down inside, I was actually curious what his work was and who he was like on the job. He very much separated his work from time at home. He was in a simple yet beautiful hotel room that overlooked the ocean. This is what it looked like to be in a castle across the way. Wow, Scotland is pretty, I thought. I will definitely have to come back and explore. You're probably wondering how I knew it was Scotland that we traveled to. I had seen some pictures before. Ada, one who I have not yet to mention, is originally from there. I began to get lost in past thoughts, but the present was determined to be dominant in this moment. I snapped out of my thoughts to see my father sitting at the end of his bed in despair. It was as if I could read his thoughts. I was amazed, still, that he couldn't see me. What is this? My dad, I thought. I have done what they said. I have the things I want, but yet I don't feel complete. As he kept thinking, I snuck by the window and threw the letter at him. Huh? Who, who is here? Hurry, Charlie, before he sees us. Young one, I sure hope that you know what you just did. We watched from afar as he stared at the letter in disbelief, yet wonder. There was so much anticipation that I could have done a thousand cartwheels. Do we show up and tell him now? Before I could finish my thought, I ran to him. Dad! What? Jamie, Jim, Jim, wait, how? How did you get here? Dad, there is no time for that right now. We have to get back to the house. This work, if it really is work, has to wait. I will explain this all soon, and maybe you have some explaining as well to do. Without hesitation, I took the clock out. Jamie, what's that for? And who is this guy? Dad, you will understand in a minute. We traveled back to our home in England. So much was happening in seconds. James, you're back. Jamie, what is going on here? How did you get back so fast? Before I could explain, my brother came in with a letter written to him. Mom, look. Jack, what's this? Who did this? Jamie? 
Before I could say anything, my dad interjected. Lucy, it's the time thing. Wait, he remembered, I thought. Jamie, what time? Oh, wait, it all makes sense now. But James, I thought that was finished. You said it was no longer a thing. Huh? Now Jack was confused. Mom, Dad, Jamie, what are you all talking about? We looked at each other, realizing Jack had not known. I turned to Charlie. Should we tell him and my parents? I believe the time has come, young one. We had, we had explained what happened to Miss Lenora and the story behind the clocks. We explained what happened up until the present moment that we were in. Now that they had all read the letters to themselves, it was safe to add more reality to what has become our current present and where we were now going. Though I did not know what that could look like, there was a long pause until out of nowhere laughter came about. I turned to see that it was my brother. Jack, my mom interjected this time. Jack, she's, she isn't lying. But, but mom, how can you agree? It's just another story in her head. She's always making up stories. I realized this was like a worse nightmare to him. Jack, I grabbed his arm. How about I show you, huh? No, Jamie, I don't have time for jokes. Jack, just come with me and see. F fine. We went back into time. It was the grace of something that got us both through that warp of time. I was amazed that Jack had made it in. Perhaps there was a, still a small part of him that believed. On that note of wonder, what, you, what would usually happen in the blink of an eye seemed to have paused. I was, it was fascinating. I finally got to take it in, that moment that usually happens in the blink of an eye. There were so many colors. It felt as if I was going through a galaxy tunnel in slow motion. Memories of mine and Jack's were floating around. He was just as awestruck as I was. We traveled right to where we sat in the bushes, drenched in rain, at Miss Lenora's. We turned, we turned into the moment where we saw Lenora talking to the man about a clock from Romania. The moments we saw were the original ones that Jack had been a part of before they changed. It didn't take long for Jack to realize that something was familiar about this. I wanted to show the home memory, but we were strapped for time. Jamie, it's real, it's real. Yes, Jack, it's real. I, I'm sorry. I just thought it was another part of your imagination going wild again. Jack, this used to be a real moment, but Lenora erased it from everyone's memory except mine. She didn't want anyone to know prematurely. Okay, now we need to get back. We came back in a blink of an eye this time and didn't miss a moment of the present conversation that was happening before we left. It was like everything froze. Our mom was still in shock. Okay, Jamie, so why are you reminding us of these things? James, I thought this was over. Charles chimed in at this point. You were all a part of the Miller's clan. Miller's clan? I don't need to know any more information. I just want to know why this time travel is still happening in our family. Miss Lacey, let me explain. He then shared what Lenora had shared with me and how time traveling came about. I now chimed in. It's been time for a while for all of you to fully be you, your fullest expression, not stopped by limits. And now we're in a situation where we need you, all of you. We weren't meant to fully do this alone. I could see that Dad's curiosity was alive in him again. His face showed it. I thought Dad was alive before, but I could tell something was rising up within him. Our mom, however, was the only one still not persuaded. Charlie didn't seem to catch that, though. Well, now that you all know, we need to go. Lenora has been captured for bringing awareness of time travel to good people, for making them aware of the power that lies within them to change history. There's more that I could explain of the impact of this, but we must do something soon. James, Mom interrupted. We are not doing this again. You promised we would stop time traveling once we had children. My dad's sense of adventure and the look of excitement was wiped off of his face just as those words were spoken. But even still, he was determined. 
Lacey, trust me, I remember what we talked about. I know we wanted to, to take in every moment of their childhood without time traveling. We have sacrificed this, the risk of it, but now they have figured it out without us. They are destined for this. We were destined for this. It is our purpose. It is who we are. It is in our lineage. It is a new time now where we can do what we once loved. I understand that we needed to focus on them for that time period, but now it is time for that part of us to come back alive and for them to experience just how magical it is as a family. If I'm being honest, I truly haven't been fully happy and now I understand why. We show off a huge part of who we are and we do. My dad said it. I didn't even realize it was still in him, but he made it clear that it was hiding deep down inside. That is a hard thing to admit, but once admitted, you become stronger than you once were in protecting what you once protected yourself from. We all had tears streaming down our faces for many reasons. One being that I had always known my dad to go with the flow and not say much, but now he had a voice and spoke his heart and now our mom was doing the same. You're right, James. We have allowed it to be this way for far too long. We got comfortable. I don't know what this will look like, but then again, when do we ever know what it looks like? Now we were all on board. Okay, now that this is settled, where could she be? She could be anywhere and at any time. It was going to be like finding a needle in a haystack. But then I remembered the wine-colored clock. Wait, I said. I think I know where she could be. We went to her house and I pulled the wine-colored clock down from the wall. We will just travel to the future and see where she is. This is the clock of the future. Me and Charles, Charlie, will go first. We will come back and get the rest of you. Just stay put. Jamie, 15 notches should do it. Something was different about going through the time warp this time. Charles, Charlie, where are you? Where are we? Jamie, there you are. Charlie, it's, it's black. Why is it black, this place? It's as if it's never existed. Like I'm in a place of nothing. I was now thinking out loud. Hmm, child, that is strange. I haven't traveled to this part of the future before. Charles, there's, there's no one here. Do you think that we are lost? Oh, dear child, no. Well, how is it that I can hear you but not see you? Young one, we may get to have an eye into the future, but it is what we make of the present that determines the future. We must have come to the place of pioneering. Pioneering? Yes, it seems that we are in a place that has never been gone to before. A place that is beyond our limits? Yes, good thought, child. We are creating something new. We are in a place where knowledge has not yet manifested physically. We decided it would be best to head back and let the others know we had indeed stepped into a place of mystery. Jamie, what happened? Guys, there was nothing there, yet there was. We couldn't see anything. It was dark. Any other ideas of what to 